view. Um, but yeah, let's jump into the multicolored and colorless cards of March of the Machine. Uh, before we do that, though, just want another quick reminder that um, we have recently launched Equipped Creatures, merch for Magic fans inspired by the places, people, um, game terms that we use at the table, uh, cards, the keywords that we love, um, some shorthand we use as players. Uh, check out bonfire.com slash store slash equip. Uh, to check out our new line of merch really proud of some of the designs or all of the designs that we've put up so far and we've got some more in the works we're really excited um, to launch this site and hopefully you check out the merch and you love it my favorite one so far is the dockside ramen uh, shirt which is one of my favorite cards inspired by one of my favorite cards and places in all of magic so check that out bonfire.com slash store slash equip get yourself uh, some cool magic merch let's jump into the uh, color multicolored and colorless cards uh, from March of the Machine first up we have Baral and Kari Zeb but one of the cool things that they're doing with this set is because we're expanding to all of the places in the multiverse there's a lot of crossover We're fighting the big bad. It's a huge war. It's Avengers Endgame level stuff. Um, so there's, they're bringing back a lot of famous characters. Um, and there, there's a lot of team ups. So you're going to see a lot of dual name cards with dual characters. Um, and they tried their hardest to make an interesting mix of the two cards. Two original versions and what their abilities did. Um, so keep that in mind as we go through these multicolored cards. Uh, Baral and Kari Zev is a one blue and red for a 2-4 human legendary creature. It has first strike and menace. Uh, they say whenever you cast your first instant or sorcery spell each turn, you may cast a spell with lesser mana value that shares a card type with it from your hand without paying its mana cost. If you don't create first mate Ragavan, a legendary 2-1 red monkey pirate creature token. It gains haste until end of turn. So that's pretty cool. You get a free token, a free 2-1 with haste. Um, just by playing a spell. You can also use that spell to kind of semi-cascade into a second spell for free. If it shares a spell type with it. Uh, really neat. I think Baral and Kari Zev is a fun like... Maybe one of in the Spellslinger Phoenix deck. Uh, I'm not sure how it's going to play. I'm excited. I'm keeping my eye on this card. Excited to see what it might be able to do. Uh, next up, we have Borborygmos and Fibblethip. Two green, r blue, red for a 6-5 Cyclops Humunculus legendary creature. Whenever Borborygmos and Fibblethip enters the battlefield or attacks draw a card then you may discard any number of land cards when you discard one or more cards this way borborygmos and fibblethip deal twice that much damage to target creature and you can pay one and a blue to put borborygmos and fibblethip into its owner's library third from the top pretty neat uh, next up we have botanical brawler uh, one green, one white for a 0-0 zero, zero elemental warrior with trample. Botanical Brawler enters the battlefield with two 1-1 one, one counters on it. Whenever one or more 1-1 one, one counters are put on another permanent you control, if it's the first time 1-1 one, one counters have been put on that permanent this turn, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Botanical Brawler. So again, we see that synergy between green and white and 1-1 one, one counters. Um... Pretty cool card. I don't mind it. Next up, we have Jeru and Hazaret. Two red, red, white for a 5-4 human god. As long as you have one or fewer cards in hand, Jeru and Hazaret has vigilance and haste. The original Hazaret had, like, you can't attack unless you have two or fewer cards in hand, so that's cool. Um, whenever Jeru and Hazaret attack, look at the top six cards of your library. 
You may exile a legendary creature card from among them. Put the rest on the bat bottom of your library in a random order. Until end of turn, you may cast the exiled card without paying its mana cost. So that's pretty big. Uh, next up, we have Drana and Linvala. One white, white, black for a 3-4 vampire angel with flying and vigilance. Activated abilities of creatures your opponent's control can't be activated. Drana in, and Linvala has all activated abilities of all creatures your opponent's control. You may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to activate those abilities. Very cool. Very powerful. Shuts down all of your activated or your opponent's activated cards or activatable cards. Uh, next we have Elvish Batkeeper. Look at that. Look at that pose, that hair, leaf hair, oil leaf hair, whatever it is. Um, Elvish Batkeeper is one black and a green for a 3-3 Phyrexian Elf. When Batkeeper enters the battlefield, incubate two. So just as a reminder, incubate means create an incubator token with two 1-1 one -one counters on it because it's incubate two specifically. Um, and it includes pay two, transform this artifact. It transforms into a 0-0 zero -zero Phyrexian artifact creature. Uh, you can pay five to transform target incubator token you control and double the number of 1-1 one -one counters on it. So that's pretty intriguing. Next up, we have Errant and Giada. So Giada, Font of Hope, an Errant Street Artist from New Capenna. One white and a blue for a 2-3 human angel with flash and flying. You may look at the top card of your library anytime. You may cast spells with flash or flying from the top of your library. That's pretty potent, actually. Pretty cool. Uh, next up, we have Galta and Mavren. Three green, green, white, white for a 12-12 dinosaur vampire with trample. Whenever you attack, choose one. Create a tapped and attacking XX green dinosaur creature token with trample, where X is the greatest power among other attacking creatures. Uh, create X11 white vampire creature tokens with lifelink, where X is the number of other attacking creatures. That is crazy uh, next up we have glissa herald of predation three black and a green for a three five phyrexian zombie elf at the beginning of combat on your turn choose one incubate two twice so you get two incubator tokens with two counters on them each transform all incubator tokens you control or phyrexians you control gain first strike and death touch until end of turn so glissa coming in strong again I like it. Uh, next up is Halo Forager. One blue black for a 3-1 fairy rogue with flying. When Halo Forager enters the battlefield, you may pay X. When you do, you may cast target instant or sorcery card with mana value X from a graveyard, any graveyard, without paying its mana cost. If that spell would be put into a graveyard, exile it instead. So you can cast something potent an instant or sorcery from your opponent's graveyard or your graveyard. Um, that's pretty cool. Next up, we have Hiditsugu and K K K Kairi. I don't know. My mouth just did not want to say that word. Um, Hiditsugu and Kairi. Two blue, blue, black for a 5-4 ogre demon dragon. So I like that they put all the creature types in the type line. Um, Hidetsugu and Kairi has flying. And when Hidetsugu and Kairi enters the battlefield, draw three cards. Then put two cards from your hand on top of your library in any order. So it's kind of like ETB brainstorm, sort of. Um, when Hidetsugu and Kairi dies, exile the top card of your library. Target opponent loses life equal to its mana value. If it's an instant or sorcery card, you may cast it without paying its mana cost. Wow, okay. That's pretty big. So what you want to do, you know this is going to get killed fairly quickly. So what you want to do is whatever you've put at the top of your library, you want it to be high mana value, 
so that your target loses your opponent loses that much life but you also want it to be something you can cast for free so make it an instant or sorcery card that's worth a lot of mana uh, next up we have Inga and Asika this is a cute card uh, two green blue for a 4-4 human god Creatures you control have Vigilance and tap to add one mana of any color. Spend this mana only to cast a creature spell. And whenever you cast a creature spell, if three or more mana from creatures was spent to cast it, draw a card. That's cool. Inga and Azika are really cool um, characters from the Kaldheim set. I love that they've got the cat chariot here. Uh, pretty good card. Next up we have, oh, this is um, Invasion of Alara. For Wooburg, you get a Battle Siege. So I'm going to explain this again because I'm going to cut these videos up on YouTube. Um, battle Sieges are a new card type, and they they are battles. So battle Battle is the new card type, and Sieges are the subtype. So there might be new battles in the future, that might not be sieges so keep in mind that the rules for sieges are for sieges specifically um, and a siege reads as a siege enters choose an opponent to protect it you and others can attack it when it is defeated then exile it then cast it transformed um, so let's go back to invasion of alara it costs wooberg to play it you assign it to your opponent to protect it when Invasion of Alara enters the battlefield, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile two non-land cards with mana value four or less. You may cast one of those cards without paying its mana cost. Put up, put one of them into your hand, then put the other cards exiled this way on the bottom of your library in a random order. And it has seven counters on it, so when you defeat it, when you do seven damage to it, it transforms into Awaken the Maelstrom, a sorcery. Awaken the Maelstrom is all colors. Target player draws two cards. You may put an artifact card from your hand onto the battlefield. Create a token that's a copy of a permanent you control. Distribute three 1-1 one -one counters among one, two, or three creatures you control. Destroy target permanent op an opponent controls. That's pretty spectacular. Um, it's a lot to to kick off. It's a lot to actually activate it, but that's pretty crazy. Uh, we have another battle, so we can go through this one as well. Um, invasion of Amonket. One blue black for a battle siege. Again, when a siege enters, choose an opponent to protect it. Once you defeat it, um, you transform it. Basically, you're giving your opponent a Planeswalker type card without any abilities on it. They just have to protect it so that you don't get the transformed version. Um, when Invasion of Amonkhet enters the battlefield, each player mills three cards. Then each opponent discards a card and you draw a card. It has four counters on it. So when you defeat it, it turns into Lazotep Convert, a 4-4 zombie creature. You may have Lazotep Convert enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature card in any graveyard, except it's a 4-4 black zombie in addition to its other types. That's pretty big. Um, I love that it says any graveyard. So then we've got Invasion of Asgol. Black, red for a battle siege. When Invasion of Asgol enters the battlefield, target player sacrifices a creature or planeswalker and loses one life. It has four counters on it. So when you defeat it, it turns into Ashen Reaper, a 2-1 zombie elemental with menace. At the beginning of your end step, put a 1-1 counter on Ashen Reaper. If a permanent was put into a graveyard from the battlefield this turn. Interesting. That seems fun. Not super potent, but fun. Next up, we have Invasion of Ergamon. Uh, red and a green for a battle siege. When Invasion of Ergamon enters the battlefield, create a treasure token. Then you may discard a card if you do draw a card. It has five counters on it. When you defeat it, it becomes Truga Cliff 
Cliff Charger, a 3-4 Rhino with Trample. When Cliff Charger enters the battlefield, you may discard a card. If you do, search your library for a land or battle card, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle. That's pretty potent, actually. Uh, then we've got Invasion of Kaladesh. One blue, one red for a battle siege with four counters. When Invasion of Kaladesh enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one colorless Thopter artifact creature token with flying. When you defeat it, it transforms into Aetherwing Golden Scale Flagship. That's super cool looking. Um, is a Star 4 vehicle, legendary vehicle, with flying. Aetherwing Golden Scale Flagship's power is equal to the number of artifacts you control. It has Crew 1. So it's cheap, but it also counts your artifacts. So it might be hard to make big, but... Uh, Seems pretty cool. Uh, next up, we have Invasion of Kai Lem. Two red white for a five counter siege. When Invasion of Kai Lem enters the battlefield, up to two target creatures each get plus two plus oh and gain vigilance and haste until end of turn. When you defeat it, it turns into Valor's Reach Tag Team, a sorcery. Create two, three, two red and white warrior to creature tokens with. Whenever this creature and at least one other creature token attack, put a 1-1 counter on this creature. Interesting. Not too bad. Then we've got Invasion of Lorwyn. Four black and a green for a battle siege. When Invasion of Lorwyn enters the battlefield, destroy target non-elf creature and opponent controls with power X or less, where X is the number of lands you control. It has five counters on it. When you defeat it, it becomes Winnowing Forces. A star star elf warrior creature. Winnowing Forces power and toughness are equal to the number of lands you control. That's pretty big. That's pretty big. Uh, next up we have Invasion of Moag. Two green white for a battle siege. When Invasion of Moag enters the battlefield, put a 1-1 counter on each creature you control. It has five counters on it when you defeat it it turns into bloom wielder dryads a 3-3 dryad creature with ward 2 at the beginning of your end step put a 1-1 counter on target creature you control that's pretty good uh, next up we have invasion of new capenna obviously these cards are all in alphabetical order so all the invasions are clumped into one group um, invasion of New Capenna is one white, one black for a battle siege. When Invasion of New Capenna enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice an artifact or creature. When you do, exile target artifact or creature an opponent controls. That's pretty powerful. And it turns into Holy, Holy Frazzle Cannon. An equipment artifact. Whenever an equipped creature attacks, put a 1-1 one, one counter on that creature and each other creature you control that shares a creature type with it. Its equip cost is one. That's not bad at all. Uh, next up, we have Invasion of New Phyrexia. X, white, blue for a mythic battle. When Invasion of New Phyrexia enters the battlefield, create X, two, two, white and blue knight creature tokens with vigilance. It has six counters on it. When you defeat it, it transforms into Teferi Akosa of Zalfir. A four loyalty Teferi Planeswalker. Plus one, draw two cards, then discard two cards unless you discard a creature. Minus two, you get an emblem with knights you control. Get plus one, plus O, oh, and have ward one. Minus three. Oh. Minus three says tap X creatures you control when you do... Shuffle target non-land permanent and opponent controls with mana value X or less into its owner's library. So you can immediately, after two turns, get give all your knights plus two, plus O, oh, and ward two. That's pretty cool. Uh, I'm just going to take a quick drink because my throat is closing. Oh, Okay. Our next invasion is of Pyrulia. One green, one blue for a battle siege with four counters. When invasion of Pyrulia enters the battlefield, scry three, then reveal the top card of your library. 
If it's a land or double face card, draw a card. Once you defeat it, it turns into Gargantuan Slabhorn. A 4-4 beast with Trample and Ward 2. Other transformed permanents you control have Trample and Ward 2. That's pretty cool. There's lots of transformed double face cards in this set, so that's pretty powerful. Uh, next up, we have Invasion of Tolvadar. Three white black for a five counter battle siege. When Invasion of Tolvadar enters the battlefield, return target non battle permanent card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Oh. When you defeat it, it becomes the Broken Sky. Creature tokens, you, an enchantment that says creature tokens you control get plus one plus oh and have lifelink. At the beginning of your end step, create a one one black and white spirit creature token with flying. That's really cool, actually. I like that. Uh, our last invasion is Invasion of Xerex. Two white blue for a four counter battle siege. When Invasion of Xerex enters the battlefield, return up to one target creature to its owner's hand. When you defeat it, for get those four counters off of there, it transforms into Vertex Paladin, a star star angel knight with flying. Vertex Paladin and Toughness are equal, each equal to the number of creatures you control. So really leaning into that knight synergy between white and blue. Uh, next up, we have Joyful Storm Sculptor. Three blue red for a 2-3 human shaman. When Joyful Storm Sculptor enters the battlefield, create two 1-1 one, one blue and red elemental creature tokens. Whenever you cast a spell that has Convoke, Joyful Storm Sculptor deals one damage to each opponent and each battle they protect. Not too bad. Uh, next up we have Kogla and Yadaro. Oh, the big ape and the cool dinosaur. Um, two red, red, green, green for a 7-7 seven, seven ape dinosaur turtle. When Kogla and Yadaro enter the battlefield, choose one. Your options are it gains trample and haste until end of turn, or it fights target creature you don't control. Then it has an activated ability that costs two red green. Discard Kogla and Yadaro. Destroy up to one target artifact or enchantment. Shuffle Kogla and Yadaro into your library from your graveyard, then draw. So that's kind of something that Yadaro did. And then Kogla did the enters the battlefield buff. So it's that's a nice mix. I like that. It's a pretty powerful card. Uh, next up, we have Kroxa and Kunaros. Three red, white, black for a 6-6 six, six Elder Giant Dog. Vigilance, Menace, Lifelink. Whenever Kroxa and Kunaros enter the battlefield or attacks, you may excel five cards from your graveyard. When you do, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. That's pretty cool. Um, then we have Marshal of Zalfir, one white, one blue for a 2-2 human knight. Other knights you control get plus one, plus one, and then you can pay a, an Azorius, tap it to tap another target creature. Uh, nice little knights. Lord, I like that. Mirror Shield Hoplite, one red, one white for a 2-2 human soldier with vigilance. Whenever a creature you control becomes the target of a backup ability, copy that ability. You may choose new targets for the copy. This ability triggers only once. That's really cool. We haven't seen anything that duplicates backup abilities. So um, backup is a new... Um, what's the term for? Keyword in March of the Machine, where when you play a card with backup, you can put a counter on another creature and give that other creature your backup cards abilities. So this duplicates those. That's really cool. Um, then we have Mutagen Connoisseur. One green blue for an 05 Valdal Valdalcan Mutant with flying and vigilance. Mutagen Connoisseur gets plus one plus O for each transformed permanent you control. Pretty cool. Then we have Omnath Locus of All. One white, one blue, one Phyrexian black. One gr 
red, one green for a 4-4 Phyrexian Elemental. If you would lose unspent mana, that mana becomes black instead. At the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, look at the top card of your library. You may reveal that card if it has three or more color mana symbols in its mana cost. If you do, add three mana in any combination of its colors and put it into your hand. If you don't reveal it, put it into your hand. That's pretty cool. Um, then we've got Quintorius Lore Master. Three red white for a 3-5 elephant cleric with vigilance. At the beginning of your end step, exile target non-creature, non-land card from your graveyard. Create a 3-2 red and white spirit creature token. And then it has an activated ability that reads, pay one red, white, and tap. Sacrifice a spirit. Choose target card exiled with Quintorius. You may cast that card this turn without paying its mana cost. If that spell would be put into a graveyard, put it on the bottom of its owner's library instead. Oh, cool. So you exile stuff from your graveyard, create spirit tokens, and then in a pinch, you can sacrifice those spirit tokens and cast the cards that you exiled with it to make it. That's a nice little synergy. Um, next up, we have Rampaging Geoderm. Two red green for a 3-3 dinosaur beast with trample and haste. Whenever you attack, target attacking creature gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. If it's attacking a battle, put a 1-1 one, one counter on it instead. Nice. Uh, then we've got Rankle and Torbran. One black, black, red, red for a 3-4 fairy dwarf with flying, first strike, and haste. Whenever Rankle and Torbran deals combat damage to a player or battle, choose any number of the following. One, each player creates a treasure token. Two, each player sacrifices a creature. Or three, if a source would deal damage to a player or battle this turn, it deals that much damage plus two. Interesting. That seems fun for five mana. Pretty cool. Next up, we have Sculpted Perfection. Two white, black for an enchantment. When Sculpted, Sculpted Perfection enters the battlefield, incubate two. Uh, so to, I don't know if I've explained incubation in the multicolored segment yet, but incubation means create an incubator token with X11 one, one counters on it. And then that token reads plus pay two to transform this artifact. It transforms into a zero zero Phyrexian artifact creature. Um, so if you incubate two, you get a, t a token with two one, one counters on it. Then you pay two to transform it into a creature. Um, and Sculpted Perfection also reads Phyrexians you control get plus one, plus one. That's pretty good. A little Phyrexian anthem. Uh, next up is Scorm Stormclaw Rager. One black red for a 2-2 ogre warrior creature with pay one, sacrifice another creature or artifact, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Stormclaw, and draw a card. Activate at sorcery speed. Interesting. Uh, next up, we have Thalia and the Gitrog monster. Cool little team up. One white, black, green for a 4-4 human frog horror with first strike and death touch. You may play an additional land on each of your turns. Creatures and non-basic lands your opponents control enter the battlefield tapped. And whenever Thalia and the Gitrog monster attack, sacrifice a creature or land, then draw a card. Um... Important to note that that last bit is not an option. There's no optional sacrifice a creature or land. You have to sacrifice a creature or land and draw a card. Um, so that'll be important. It's nice that it, it lets you play additional lands on each of your turns. So that's very helpful with that last must ability. Pretty cool. Next up, we have Yargle and Multani. Three black, black, green for a 18-6 frog spirit elemental with no ability text. An 18-6. Yep. Uh, next up, we have Zamone and Dina. This is a cool team up. Uh, black, green, blue for a 3-4 human dryad. 
Whenever you draw your second card each turn, target opponent loses two life and you gain two life. Then tap, sacrifice another creature, draw a card. You may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield tapped. If you control eight or more lands, repeat this process once. Uh, that's pretty cool. I like that. Um, I think this is interesting. There's a really cool Demir draw to deck that's out there right now. Uh, with a lot of stuff from Brothers War. Um, and this would be a nice, interesting addition to it. Splash Green. Put this in your Demir Draw 2 deck. Uh, pretty fun. And then we go to our last dual color card. It is Zergo and Ojutai. Two blue, red, white. For a 4 4 orc dragon with flying in haste. When Zergo and Ojutai, oh, sorry, Zergo and Ojutai have hexproof as long as it entered the battlefield this turn. Whenever one or more dragons you control deal combat damage to a player or battle, look at the top three cards of your library. Put one of them into your hand and the rest onto the bottom of your library in any order. You may return one of those dragons to its owner's hand. Interesting. That's kind of fun. Um, then we get into the colorless cards. First up, we have a Mythic Battle. Invasion of Ravnica for five colorless. When Invasion of Ravnica enters the battlefield, exile target non-land permanent and opponent controls that ha isn't exactly two colors. That's pretty cool. Um, and it has four counters on it. So when it is defeated, exile it and play it as Guild Pack Paragon. Look at the armor's got all the um, Ravnica symbols on it. Guildpack Paragon is a 5-5 construct artifact creature. Whenever you cast a spell that's exactly two colors, look at the top six cards of your library. You may reveal a card that's exactly two colors from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Very strange, but I like it. I like it. Uh, next up, we have Flywheel Racer. Two mana for a 3-2 artifact vehicle with Vigilance. Tap it to add one mana of any color. Activate only if Flywheel Racer is a creature. And it has Crew 1. So you have to crew something to tap it for the mana, or you can attack it. Uh, attack with it, sorry. It's not bad. It's a cool little card. Uh, next up, we have Halo Hopper. Three colorless for a 3-2 artifact creature frog with Convoke. That's fun. Uh, then we have Kite Sail. Two mana for an equipment artifact. Equipped creature gets plus one, plus O, oh, and has flying, and its equipped cost is two. A nice little um, sort of cheap way to give something flying. I like it. Phyrexian Archivist is next. Six colorless for a 4-5 Phyrexian Construct Artifact Creature with Reach. Pay to tap it, put target card from a graveyard onto the bottom of its owner's library. That's handy. If you don't have your cling to dusts or anything on you, that's pretty handy. Uh, next up we have Realm Breaker the Invasion Tree. For three colorless you get a legendary artifact. Uh, Realm Breaker has two activated abilities. The first one is pay two, tap it. Target opponent mills three cards. Put a land card from their graveyard onto the battlefield tapped under your control. It gains if this land would leave the battlefield. Exile it instead of putting it anywhere else. Okay. Uh, and then it has pay ten, tap it. Sacrifice Realm Breaker, the invasion tree. Search your library for any number of Praetor cards. Put them onto the battlefield, then shuffle. Oh my god. Um... So you could play a five-color all Praetors deck. Um, and, <laughs> and put them all onto the battlefield in one fell swoop. For any number of Praetor cards. That's crazy. Um, how many... I'm curious as to how many cards actually have Praetor in their type. I know that the new ones do, but I'm not sure. Uh, 
Um, okay, so Gix, Yogmoth, Praetor, has Praetor. Um, all of the additions of Shieldred, Jinkataxius, Elish Norn, Urbrask, Vornklex, they all have Praetors. Wow. So pretty much Gix is the only standout one. He's he's the only like random Praetor. Everything else is just the three different versions of Elish Norn, Jingataxis, Shieldred, Urbrask, and Vorinclex. This would be a really fun card to put into a commander deck. If only you could have a legendary artifact as your commander. Um, that's really cool. I think it would be fun to have a commander deck where you just have all, what is that, five times three? 15 Praetors. Praetor cards in your deck. Plus Jick, plus Gix. So 16 Praetor cards. That's fun. Um, Skittering Surveyor is next. Three colorless for a 1-2 construct artifact creature. When Skittering Surveyor enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a basic land card, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle. That's all right. And then we have the final Sword of Blank and Blank in the entire cycle of swords. This is the Demir colorway. Sword of Once and Future. For three mana, you get an artifact equipment. Equipped creature gets plus two, plus two, and has protection from blue and black. When equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, surveil two. Then you may cast an instant or sorcery spell with mana value two or less from your graveyard without paying its mana cost. If that spell would be put into your graveyard, exile it instead. Equip two. So it's not super powerful, but it's interesting. And then the final card of our set review is the Urn of Godfire. One colorless for an artifact. Pay two to add one mana of any color, or pay six, tap it, sacrifice it, destroy target creature or enchantment. Um, pretty standard, pretty pretty uninteresting. I think the invasion of Kaladesh and the Aetherwing um, could be the most intriguing card in this. I've got my eye on Beryl and uh, Baral and Kari Zev for sure, because that's my thing. Halo Forger is another one. It's like pseudo. Um, oh my God. What is the card's name? Um, it's a blue creature when you can flash it in and you can cast something from your graveyard. Why? Oh my god, I can't think of it. Why can't I think of it? Uh, uh, uh. Spell. Snapcaster Mage. Snapcaster Mage. Halo Forger is like a pseudo Snapcaster Mage. Um,. It enters the battlefield, you pay X, you can cast something from your graveyard. Uh, the only difference is that it doesn't have flash, which is kind of a bummer, but um, I don't mind that all too much. Obviously flash would make it really powerful. I'd rather it have flash than flying, but um, you know. You know, I think the Galta and Mavrin card is very scary. Obviously, the invasion of Alara is also terrifying because Awaken the Maelstrom is super powerful, but um, I'm also intrigued by the Amonkhet invasion. Generally, all of these are pretty powerful and could be ugly if you let them get out of hand. Um, yeah, not a lot of colorless cards in this set, which I guess makes sense. There's so much color to go around. Realm Breaker is extremely intriguing. Um, pay 10, sacrifice it, 
Search your library for any number of Praetor cards. Um, that's going to be a little crazy. I think, um, you know, Halo Forager or Baral and Kari Zev are my choices for most intriguing cards in this block. Um, yeah, the last, I guess the last thing I want to go look at were all of the lands. So they're reprinting all of the ETB gain one lands with a Phyrexian twist in the art. Um, so all 10 of them, 10 of them, all of the dual color gain one lands are being reprinted for this set. We've got Bloodfell Caves, we've got Blossoming Sands, we've got Dismal Backwater, Jungle Hollow, Rugged Highlands, Scoured Barrens, Swiftwater Cliffs, Thornwood Falls, Tranquil Cove, and Windscarred Crag. Um, it's nice that they're reprinting this full set because um, obviously the last few sets haven't had the gain one lands so when the standard rotation happens this fall we would lose all of the kamigawa gain one lands uh, which were the last time we saw these i believe i believe um and then a quick look at the full art basics these are gorgeous um some of the coolest ones obviously magic has been killing it with the full art basics lately Every new set that comes out, it's like, oh, that's my favorite full art basic land. Um, this is one of the planes. This is another plane. Obviously, because we're traveling to so many different universes in this set, um, they've got two versions of each full art basic so that they can explore different um, planes. And then we've got the full art island number one and island number two. Very, very cool. I love this one. And then we've got Swamp 1 and Swamp number 2. We've got Mountain number 1 and Mountain number 2. We've got Forest number 1 and Forest number 2. Uh, the greatest looking one is this Swamp. This is... This might be one of the most beautiful pieces of magic art, period. Like, I've ever seen. Like, just look at it. It's astounding. If I were to have, like, magic art that covered my entire wall in my apartment, this would be it. This is so gorgeous, so detailed, so many layers. The colors are beautiful. Uh, the fact that it's, like, in Kamigawa is amazing because that's one of my favorite planes. Um... I just love it so much. It's so good. I'm I'm just blown away by it. I love it. I want them. A hundred of each. Please. And, and that's it. That's it for our full set review. Again, um, I'm going to try to find some quick examples of things so we can go over some of the new rules one more time. Sieges are a noob card type. They're a battle card type. Um, when a siege enters the battlefield, you pick an opponent to protect it, and then you have to deal damage to it to defeat it. Once you defeat it, it turns into something spicy on the back that you get to play for free. Um, there's a new rule type called backup. Uh, when a backup creature enters the battlefield, you can put a 1-1 counter on another target creature. If that creature isn't... Um, the the original card with backup then the creature that gets backup um gets all of the abilities of the backup creature until the end of turn um there's also phyrexian transforms that you pay extra mana to transform something into a phyrexianized version uh those are really cool uh there's convoke do I have anything with Convoke? Oh, there's basic, there's land cycling. Each color has land cycling, which lets you find a card of that land type. Uh, and it's not, doesn't have to be basic, which is great. 
Uh, that convoke doesn't have an explanation of convoke. Uh, oh, there's incubate. So incubate means that you create an incubator token with X number of 1-1 one, one counters on it. And then you pay two to transform your artifact, your incubator into a creature. And it has X 1-1 one, one counters on it. Uh, that's going to be really cool. Um, convoke. Here we go. Convoke has your creatures can help cast this spell. Each creature you tap while casting this spell pays for one colorless or one mana of that creature's color. Um, I think that's going to be really cool. So that is our full set review. All five colors, all multicolored, all colorless, all the lands. Um, thank you so much for coming on this ride. I hope that you have a fantastic day. And if you were watching this live, thank you so much for hanging out. If you're watching this on YouTube, definitely comment on each of the videos. Tell me what your favorite card from the, that block is. Um, we're going to record a quick little ranking right now and then we'll we'll catch you soon we'll have some builds coming out as soon as the set drops uh we'll have a video for a pre-release kit build we'll play some limited on stream uh, this set is going to be a lot of fun and this is going to be the set that holds us throughout the summer as far as um legal and standard and modern and pioneer and stuff or not modern pioneer um we have lord of the rings this summer but this is the last standard set until the fall. So thank you so much for hanging out. Um, if you haven't yet, definitely listen to or watch all of the narrated March of the Machine story videos we put out on our YouTube. Uh, check out March of the Machine uh, story because it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, if you like magic merch, check out Equipped Creatures uh bonfire.com slash store slash equip for some magic inspired merch that we are very proud to be uh sponsored by love all of the stuff that's in this shop definitely check them out say what's up if you can uh and that's it thank you so much we'll see you uh 